Hi everyone, welcome to the second video uh, on chapter seven. And on this slide, I'd like to tell you a little bit about fugacity. Okay, so uh, hopefully you read the section of the chapter on fugacity, and I want to just talk a little bit more about it. And to help you understand what it means, I want to return to uh, the equation that we saw applied to an ideal gas where delta G R naught equaled negative RT natural log KP. Where remember KP uh, for a particular uh, imaginary reaction, alpha moles of substance A plus beta moles of substance B is in some sort of dynamic equilibrium with gamma moles of substance C plus delta moles of substance D. And we saw that uh, Kp was equal to a fraction where we had the uh, products on top, products over reactants, the partial pressure of substance C divided by the standard pressure raised to the gamma power, substance D to the delta power, partial pressure of A, alpha, partial pressure of B, like so. Right, and that's true only for an ideal gas. So now, uh, what do we have to do for a real gas? This equation up here, especially this one right here, is not going to apply to a real gas. Instead, we're going to have to do something else, all right? So our delta G R naught is going to have to equal negative R T log K F. Okay, so it's a new type of equilibrium constant. And our K F here is going to be fairly similar to the pattern we see up there, but we're going to replace P with F everywhere I, we see it, FC. <clears throat> and we'll come back to what all these things mean once we get this all down. Note that this is applying to the exact same reaction as above. Okay. So this is our fugacity equilibrium constant. So what is the fugacity? Well, we can see that fugacity, F, it's sort of like a pressure, okay? And it's going to be in units of pressure. So it may be in bar, it may be in atmosphere, it may be in pascals. So it's something like a pressure. However, it's, uh, it's not exactly the same as pressure. And in fact, it relates to the pressure in the following way. The fugacity is going to equal uh, some coefficient, which is going to be a function of pressure and temperature multiplied times the pressure. So this deal right here is called the fugacity coefficient. All right, and we'll, I'll show you an example of what a fugacity coefficient looks like in just a moment, but also this F naught happens to be the same as P naught, and it's just one bar. So that's kind of convenient. And I'd also like to note that in the limit of pressure going to zero, the fugacity is going to equal the pressure itself. And this is, this is basically just saying that in the limit of an ideal gas, which is, remember, at low pressure, the fugacity is going to equal the pressure, okay? <clears throat> Another note that I'd like to make about the fugacity before I explain a little more about what it is and how it relates to the fugacity coefficient is about the chemical potential. So remember, mu is the chemical potential and it's equal to how the Gibbs free energy changes with number of moles, keeping temperature and pressure constant 
and also keeping constant number of moles of any other substances if this happens to be a mixture or something. And the chemical potential in general is going to depend on temperature and pressure. And it's going to equal some sort of standard state chemical potential, so the one at one bar, plus RT log F over F naught. So this is actually the expression that we used to construct this one up here related to uh, the fugacity equilibrium constant. So that is what applies for a real gas. And then uh, remember that uh, for an ideal gas, the equivalent expression is that the chemical potential at a given temperature and pressure equals chemical potential at, at one bar plus RT log P over P naught. So again, we see that for real gases, we're replacing pressure everywhere with fugacity, at least when we're talking about equilibrium, uh, constants, uh, Gibbs free energy, etc. Okay, so I'd like to come back to this uh, fugacity coefficient right here. I'm going to define it right now in terms of Z, this compressibility, which remember changes for real gases, but remember for ideal gases, this compressibility Z, which equals PVM real over RT, that's changing for real gases, but it's staying constant at one for ideal gases. Okay, so here we go. The fugacity is going to be equal to the pressure of the system multiplied times e raised to the power of the integral from 0 to p, that compressibility minus 1, and then I'm going to do a little p prime there, which is going to represent just a variable of integration. So it's not a derivative that I'm talking about there, it's another variable, p. And just to be clear, if I have x inside curly brackets like that, that means that it's e raised to the power of something. And this whole term right there, that's that gamma pt that you saw up there, that's that fugacity coefficient. Uh, next, I want to show you a sample calculation for this fugacity coefficient, like what it would be for a gas that's like a van der Waals gas, but with no attraction. Okay, so I'm going to write down an equation for a van der Waals gas where there is zero attraction. So um, this equation here is an equation of state that's different from an ideal gas because it's got that B parameter, which is the repulsion. But it also doesn't have that A parameter, which is going to account for attraction. So this is like a modified van der Waals equation. And, and I'm only doing this just to show you an example of how you would calculate the fugacity coefficient. Okay, so remember that this compress, uh, uh, compressibility is equal to Vm real divided by Vm ideal. And in our case, the Vm ideal is just RT over P, okay? And this right here is our VM real, so I'm going to rearrange that equation right there and say that VM real minus B is going to be equal to RT divided by P, like so, and then just add B to both sides. So Vm real equals Rt over P plus B. So then my Z, plugging in the Vm real and the Vm ideal, just becomes Rt over P plus B divided by Rt over P. Okay, and then um, I can spread out the sum in the numerator, and I get 1 plus BP divided by RT, okay? 
Great, so now we're ready to plug that right into our fugacity coefficient equation. Pressure times E raised to the power of zero to P, Z minus one over P prime, DP prime. And so now I'm going to plug in this expression straight in for Z right there. And I'm gonna replace the P with P prime because I'm trying to integrate over that. So here we go. P exponential, the integral from zero to P, and then we're gonna have uh, one plus BP divided by RT minus one, but those ones just cancel right out. And then, uh, oh, I'm forgetting my prime here, D prime. Okay, my primes cancel out, so that becomes P exponent then this is the integral zero to P of B divided by RT, DP prime like this. And then I do that integral and that comes out to be BP over RT. All right, and so that right there is my fugacity coefficient for a given pressure and temperature. And as you can see, it depends on both pressure and temperature. Now for a different equation of state, you'd get a different fugacity coefficient. Okay, let's review what we've talked about this chapter so far. We mentioned, uh, we're skipping this first one because that was the last uh, chapter. We talked about the virial equation of state, which says that the pressure is equal to RT times one over VM plus some virial coefficient VM squared plus the next virial coefficient VM cubed, so on and so forth, on and on to infinity. That's the virial equation of state. We also saw the compression factor Z Z is VM real divided by VM ideal. And another way to write this is just P VM divided by RT for a real gas. Okay, we also saw the boil temperature, which remember was defined as when we have a little plot here and we've got pressure and then we've got the compression factor there. Remember the boil temperature, so if that's the compression factor for an ideal gas, the boil temperature is the temperature where the curve has a slope of zero right there at low pressures. So it comes straight out and then curves up. And the boil temperature for a van der Waals gas is gonna be equal to A divided by RB. Next, the law of corresponding states, we saw how a reduced temperature is equal to the temperature of the system divided by its critical temperature. Reduced pressure equals the pressure of the system divided by its critical pressure. Reduced molar volume divided by volume, molar volume of the system divided by the critical molar volume. When we calculate all of these, it allows us to fairly accurately predict that pressure temperature phase diagram. So if we take, if we know the critical constants for a particular gas, we know what its boiling point is gonna be for a given pressure. We know where its triple point is going to be with a fair degree of accuracy. We know how to construct uh, a curve like this one here, where it, we're plotting the uh, compression factor against the pressure. So um, that was the law of corresponding states. And then lastly, we saw in this video the fugacity, which is necessary for constructing an equilibrium constant that actually relates to the Gibbs free energy of reaction. And so if we want to find partial pressures or mole fractions based on the Gibbs free energy, we have to go through the fugacity. We can't just go straight to pressure. And that was the fugacity and the fugacity coefficient.